Now, there's a lot of things in this class that you're going to say, when am I going to use this in my life, right? Yes. And there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to say, never. And you might that might anger you a little bit. That might make you want to throw things out the window, possibly yourself, right? <laughs> However, here's the truth about what you're doing in class a lot. You're not learning to remember, so you don't learn to uh, know, where you could be like, oh, the Pythagorean theorem is this, or I know how to get the... Uh, solve an inequality with one step, okay? Well, oh, got to fill up my gas. I better solve an inequality with one step. No. You're not going to use that. You're not using it. The reason why we do that is because you're learning to grow, not learning to know. What I mean by that is you're learning to grow the ability of your brain to solve abstract problems, whether it be mathematical or mathematical reasoning, okay? Numbers don't go away. That thought process, the ability for your brain to work out that part of it, that's what we're doing. For example, there's a lot of people who do really well in a lot of classes except for math. Am I right? Whether it's you or somebody you know. Okay? Think about this. The mathematical reasoning in your brain is so different than all the other stuff. It's like memorizing what year um, different things happen or what amendment happened, whatever, right? You're working out that muscle, that part of your brain. So you're learning to grow, not to know. Now, that's the part of the explanation as to why people get frustrated. When am I going to use this? You're not. Deal with it. Okay? This part, however, this section, you will use your whole life. You will use it your whole life. And that's why I love it. And it will be beneficial for you every time that you go out and spend money or every time that you go out to a restaurant and you want to tip somebody 15% or 20%, you can do it quickly. And it will also impress people when you can get an estimate and be about the right, uh, about the right number. Okay? You will impress a lot of people. Maybe they're not going to just be amazed, whoa, and like buy you stuff. No, but they're going to be like, huh, that's pretty good. Let's do it. Many times when you are working with percents, an exact answer is not needed. Okay, yay, estimation. In cases like this, you can estimate. You could estimate the percent of a model that is shaded. So I'm looking this, percent, exact, exact answer is not needed. Case like this, you can estimate, estimate. Nine of the 20 squares are shaded, do you agree? Okay, you can see that this thing to the right there, nine of the 20 things are shaded. And do you agree that 9 twentieths is about 10 twentieths? Okay, so it's about 10 twentieths. Or one half. So it's safe to say that since one half is 50%, about 50% of the model is shaded. And I'm highlighting these estimation words, okay, because you need to make sure that you do that. And also I want to introduce you to a symbol that I may have introduced to you before, but we are going to be using it a lot in this section. It's an equal sign, but it's feeling loose. Okay, it's like an equal sign that's dancing a little bit. It's a squiggly. You could be pointing at something, you're like, the answer is 302. Or you could be like, the answer is about 302. Okay. And there are three methods three methods to estimate percentage. On your homework, they will tell you which one they want you to do. I'm going to look and see, double check on the test to see if there are certain sections that you have to use different methods. Okay. Some methods are more accurate than others, though. There are three methods you can use. Use the table below that shows how to estimate 30% of 300, so, whoa, 657. So I'm going to rewrite 657 right here just because it gets lost when we're doing it. So use the chart on 462 to fill out the following information. We're not gonna, I'm not going to make you bring your book just for four minutes of a lesson. So follow along as I go. Oops. We have the fraction method. I'll use blue. The fraction method. 30% is... About 33%. Do you agree? 
30% is about 33%. And 33% is what fraction? Yeah, one third. Yeah, so 33% is about one third, but we all know that 33% being one third is actually like that. But it's an estimate, so we know that. So it's about one third, comma. And one third of 660. Where did 660 come from? Why, why did he write that? Yes. Mm -hmm. 660 is about 657. So that means that when we have these, there's going to be a range. There's going to be a range of correct answers. Yes? Mm -hmm. So if I'm adding 3 to my percentage and 3 to my number, is my estimate going to be higher or lower than the actual? Higher. It's going to be higher. So one third of 6. Uh, 660, all you have to do is 660 divided by 3, and those, that's easily divisible by 3. I can do an actual equal sign, and that's going to be 220. So I'm going to write 30% of 657 is about 220. Let me circle that. 30% of 657 is about 220. Why are you doing it like that? Yeah, there it is. It's about 220. That's a good equal sign, or almost equal sign. I know. I'm impressed myself. Let's go green. We're going green this winter. The 1% method. This is the one that I use often. This is the one that I use often. This is probably my most used one that I use on a regular basis. And this is the one that I teach my friends as far as to know how to tip at places. So 1% of 660, and we're going that 660 again, so we're estimating a little bit higher. 1% of 660, now remember, to get 1% of something, all you have to do is go wah, wah, like that with the decimal point. Move the decimal point 2 to the left, which means that it is 6.6. 6. Yes? That one is an equal sign, because 100%, or sorry, 1% of 660 is exactly 6.6. 6. And 6.6 6 is about... Ew. I'm trying to go the other way. Yeah. Is about seven. Is about seven. And I need to take how many of these to get 30%? Then I need to do 30. So if I'm taking 30 of the 1%, I'm going to do 30 of what about these are. So I'm going to do 30 times ew, 7 equals 210. So I have for this one 30% of 657 is about 210. It's about 210. See how this one's a little bit lower? But are we still above or below what the actual number would be? Yeah. Above. We're still above because we rounded this guy up to 660. Correct. Good, Gershi. We okay? Who's ever making noise? Is that you? No? Okay. Well, if it is, don't do that again. The meaning of percent method. What does it all mean? Who knows? Yes, we do. I'm going to go black. Was it black there? Yes, OK. The meaning of percent. 
So do you guys agree that 30% means 30? For every 100? 30% means 30 for every 100? Doesn't it? Okay. 30 for every 100. That's what 30% is. So if you had 100 shots made in a basketball game, sorry, 100 points made in a basketball game, and 30% of them were from within 10 feet, that means you had 30 of them. Yeah, that's just percentages, blah, blah, blah. All right. How about, this would be comma, or three, four, every how many? Ten. You guys are great. Or three for every ten. All that I did there, for those of you who might be a little confused by that, is that's just a reduction. 30 over 100 can be reduced to three over ten. Yep, by dividing the common, de common divisor of 10. So I'm going to assign colors here. You guys don't have to do this. This is just for reasons of coming back to it in a little bit. Okay, this one will be green. The other one will be blue. Three for every 10. All right, back to black. Now... 657 has a blank amount of hundreds. And I ask you this. How many hundreds are there in 657? Yes. Six. There are six of them. There are six hundreds. There are six hundreds. If we had $657 and we wanted to use the biggest bills possible, there would be six $100 bills. This part could be confusing. That's why I want to stop and make sure that you understand how there are six hundreds in that. Okay. I'm going to highlight this blue. Uh, nope, 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 nope. Bad. Bad boy. No. No. Six hundreds. Back to black. And and about six tens. And about six tens. Because if you were to say exactly how many tens are there in the number 57, we would have 5.7. So that's about six tens. You follow me this far? Okay. Good. So since 357 has six hundreds, and in the green up top here, 30 for every 100. There are 30 for every 100. And you see how there are 600s? Let's break this down. Let's pause and look at these greens. It says 30 for every 100. So that means because we have 600s, we are doing 30 for every 100. There are 600s, so 30 times 6. I'm going to pause so you can just soak that part in. But I also have tens. I have about six tens. And here's where that's coming from. Now I'm just focusing on the blue. It says here, three for every 10, and we have six tens there. Three for every 10, and we have six tens there. So 
So this becomes 180 plus 18 equals 198. I almost just fell down, go boom. So we have 220, 210, and 198. 220, 210, and 198. Now there's going to be, notice how a little bit more work there is, the more accurate we're being. Okay? We were just able to estimate using just super, super easy math, 30 times 6. Ooh, watch out, right? You got that, no problem. Let's double check, check, double check, check to see. So we're going to do, let's see what it actually is. We have 657 times 0.3 equals, how close are we? 197.1. So that's how close we were just estimating. Okay, we got 198. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. We're looking good. Now let's put it into practice. It says 47% of 84, and we must use the fraction method. Yes, ma'am. Um, so since we're estimating, we don't have to find the exact answer. Correct. That's, yep. The question was, since we're estimating, we don't have to find the exact answer. So that means that if we would have done the fraction method, it wouldn't have been as accurate as we did the other two, but that would have been that window of being correct and incorrect. So 47% of 84, since it's the fraction method, I'm going to use a different color. Forty-seven percent is about what percentage? Yeah, fifty. Thank you for catching yourself. Fifty, and fifty equals one half. Now I'm going to do this squiggly here, just so I separate what I'm estimating to actually putting it through. And one half of eighty-four. 84 divided by 2. Someone raise your hand. Kobe. 42. 42. I'm going to circle that. I could even have a better answer by saying what I did last period. So 47% of 84 is about 42. Next one. 28% is almost what percent, Gabriel? What's an easy percentage that's close to? 30. 30, yeah. It's about 30%. Or one third. Or three tenths. Yeah. About 30%, which is about. 33%, which is one third ish. And one third of 390, just do 390 by 3, it says 130, yep. 130. Those are some ugly looking equal signs. Ugh. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we could have left it at 30%. I just wanted my fraction to be more accurate, but we're still uh, estimating. I mean, that 30% uh, would have been 3 tenths. So then we would have to multiply it by 3 tenths rather than just dividing by 3.
Mm. How are we feeling about this? Okay. Feeling like it's a Monday before... Oh, it is past noon. Ha! Wake up, everyone. It's past noon. Estimate using the 1% method. The 1%. Not the one that all the politicians are talking about. Okay. Ha ha. Jokes. I didn't say it was funny. I said it was a joke. Right? Especially when I say them. Estimate using the 1% method. Now, this is the point where I'd be like, oh, I'm doing my homework, and I don't remember what the 1% method is, so I go back to my notes, and I go like this. I'm like, oh, what's the 100% method, or the 1% method? I go back to my notes, and I'm like, oh, here, <clears throat> here's the 1% method right here. It's like right there, right there. So I'm going to go back and look at it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's where I do that thing with the 1%. Okay, thanks. The reason I just did that is because I, so many of you do not do that. Or let me rephrase that, not enough of you do that. We design these notes around the homework that we either make or use from the textbook. 60% of 996. 1% of 996 equals, you drop the decimal point. Actually, I'm going to do 1,000. 1% 1 of 1,000 is 10. And what percentage are we looking for? 60. So I do, I multiply that 1% times 60 to get 60%. And I get 600. Yeah, that one would be pretty close. It's closer than the fraction method, that's for sure. <laughs> fraction method. 1% of, we'll go 60, is actually equal to 0 0.6. And I'm looking for 8 of those, so I'm going to multiply 8 times that 1%, and I get 4.8. Pretty straightforward, right, guys? Yeah. yeah? All right, now this is the one that takes a little bit more steps, but it's more accurate, which is good. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, on your homework tonight, it does tell you which ones you should do. Uh, I'm going to look after class and see if we're asking you to do something specific um, for the test. Because if, if... Austin, you okay? Can you stop doing that out of nowhere? Do you know you're doing that right now? Stop. Didn't I tell you not to do that earlier? We have 48% of 120. Um, we're going to do something really close to 48%. So, well, yeah, because we found the exact number last period. Let's, let's do an estimation. We don't need to find the exact. So 48% is really close to 50. So 50 for every 100, and then that would be 5 for every 10, because that's using, we're using 50% because it's close to it. It's 5 for every 10. So to move this out, how many hundreds do we have there? Yes. There's just 100 there. So we have 50 for every 100, and there's only one of them. 
So that's 50. Then we have 5 for every 10. We have 5 for every 10. How many 10s are there? No. There's two. Look, there's two 10s in this number. There's two 10s in that number. Oh, then I have to do 50 plus 10 equals 60. So 48% of 120 is about 60. And you guys would be able to see that just by glancing at it, but I want it to be written out because not all the homework is going to be that easy. I want you to use the percent... I want you to use the meaning of percent method for number two. Let's see if you can apply what you've seen us do. Please do number two. See if you can do it. I'll start doing it on the board in a little bit. rounded 48 to 50. Okay. So then every time it's just 30 for every 100? Mm-hmm. So it'd be, okay. And how many hundreds are there? One. There's in this number here? Oh. Yes. Let's do it. So you look here to see where you would start. You know, how we did it for, this is the method we're using. Nope, this one. And we just did it right above it. You keep it 30. Keep that at 30. You don't need to change that. No necesitas cambiar esto. Esto es la misma. 30 por cada 100. Como eso. Esto usamos 50. 30 por cada 100. Y... Abajo, tres por cada diez. ¿Cuántos cientos hay? Yep, there's four. We have four hundreds here, so you're going to write thirty for every one hundred. Escribas treinta por cada um, ciento. So go ahead and write that there. Thirty for every one hundred. And how many how many hundreds do we have here? Yeah. Yep. So then do. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Good. You got it. And then again for this one, three for every ten. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you should have. Thirty for every one hundred. Three for every ten. There are four hundreds. So I have three for every four, or three for every, thirty for every hundred, and there are three for every ten, and there are two point five tens. Three times two point five is seven point
Yeah. Did you estimate a little bit differently, or? No, I forgot. I didn't know. That's okay. A lot of times there won't be that decimal there. Yep. If you had 126, that would be acceptable on homework. 33 and a third. Made a little bit harder on yourself. Yep. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so we have a student who rounded up the whole number, and we got a little bit higher of an average, so that's okay. That's why we're going to have a, an, uh, a range of stuff that's okay. We're going to have a range of stuff that's okay. Like For example, if there was a number line of acceptable answers, and we had the actual, which is... Uh, oops, yeah. Oops, equals nan. Four, two, five times point three. Turn it back. 127.5. Oh. Oh, well, yeah. We, yeah, 127.5 is the actual answer, but there would be... Duh. There would be a spot on this number line that will be acceptable. So when we check our homework tomorrow, there will be room. There will be room. There will be room. All right, now let's do these ones quickly. Then we can get the homework, and I can probably start passing some stuff back maybe. Eh, no, we only have five more minutes. So 39% of 300. There's a couple different ways that we could do this. Uh, we could look at it at B... 39%. Now, that's going to be somewhere between a quarter and half of that, right? So a quarter and half. What's half of 300? Yes. 150. Which one of these numbers is closest to 150? Yeah. 120. See how we just did that in our heads? We just used the fraction method to find out the most reasonable answer. Are you trying to get stuff to float away? You can't sit there, can you? Here, sit here. I'm messing with the air conditioner too much. Sit there. Now we have 47% of 605. 47% is really close to what percentage, Hopwood? 50. And what is 50 a fraction like? Yes, what, Willis? One half. And what's one half of 605? Everyone? 300. Yes. One hundred and twenty nine percent of four hundred. Here's the first over a hundred percent that we have. So we know that it's gonna be bigger than four hundred. So since it's gonna be bigger than four hundred, we know it's not A. Okay, we know it's not A, because A is smaller. If you multiply something by more than hundred percent, you got something bigger. Mr. Hopwood? Five hundred, I agree with you. Five hundred. Five hundred. Five thousand would be way too big. <coughs> Excuse me. This one is tricky because it's one third of a percent. Yeah. Eighty? Let's try that out though. If what if I had this? One third of two forty is what? Eighty? One third of two forty is eighty. So two forty divided by three is eighty. That's true. However, one third of a percent is zero, or it would be one third, which is 0.3 repeating, but we have to move the decimal point over two. So it would be 0 .03. Yeah, see that one's tricky. That's why we put that one in there, because we want you guys to be sure to, when they're trying to be those sneaky, sneaky math people. 0.08. Bye-bye.